Hey there, tech fans. Rick here again with another review. And today, I am really excited to talk about one of my favorite pieces of new technology from our good friends over at EchoFlow. It's called the Delta Mini, and it's a portable power station that I think provides the perfect combination of internal capacity, portability, and connectivity. And they've built it into a tiny little package you can take with you anywhere to give you all the power you need to operate and charge all of your thirsty portable devices. Now, I've been lucky to have had this unit for a couple of months, and I've been testing it everywhere. I've had it out in the field with me when I'm flying my drones. I can charge my drone batteries, my controller, my tablet. Everything I take out there that I need to recharge, I can plug into this unit. I've had a couple of power failures over the winter. And again, having this in the house allows me to plug in lamps and other electronics that we have to charge during that power outage. I've even used it on the road when I've had to do repairs in the backyard on fences or stairs. I can run my power saw off this thing, my power drills. I can recharge my batteries for my portable drills and other things. And what EchoFlow has built here, I think, is the perfect combination, like I'd mentioned, of internal capacity and portability. And that's really where other ones fall apart. When you look at some of the portable power stations on the market, they'll give you one of those three things. They'll give you a large internal capacity, but then they're not that portable. Or they'll give you portability with low capacity. And if they get those two right, where okay, it's portable, it's got pretty good internal capacity, they limit the number of connections. And what EchoFlow built with this Delta Mini is the perfect marriage of their Delta line and their River line. Now, EchoFlow makes a ton of different portable power stations, starting with the River Mini, which is a really nice small portable unit. I've reviewed it on the channel before all the way up into really large Delta units you can run your entire home on. And this unit represents the perfect marriage between the River Line and the Delta Line. It's almost like the River Line and the Delta Line had a baby, and that's what it looks like because it's a capacity that's at the very top edge of what the River Line presents, yet it's still small and portable. So it, to me, represents everything you're gonna need in a portable power station, and you can tell I'm jazzed about it because I test a lot of portable power stations. So the way I'd like to do this clip is I'll start with an unboxing just to show you everything they include with the kit because EchoFlow does a great job of giving you everything you need to charge it and use it right out of the box. And then I'll take a closer look at the unit and I'll explain the connections and indicators so you know exactly what you can plug into it, what kind of things you can charge from it. And then I'll come back at the end and actually talk about some of the special things that this product provides when you're comparing it to other portable power stations that you may be considering. So let's get started with the unboxing. When you open up the box, you'll find the Delta Mini. It's a beautiful product. It's got two handles in the top. It has 882 watt hours of total capacity and it weighs about 24 pounds. So it's certainly portable enough to take with you for a weekend of camping or if you're going out on the boat and you want to do a little fishing and you want to plug a few things in, it's the perfect size to take with you. In addition to that, it can provide 1400 watts of external connectivity. That's a lot of power. And it's also got an X boost technology built in that if you're using something with an initial current draw that's higher than 1400 watts, you can turn that on and support up to 1800 watts. And that's really important if you're running things with motors, like if you're gonna run a blender or you're gonna run a power saw, that when you first turn them on, the motor takes a lot of current to get it spun up. That boost technology will help you with that. You can plug it in and not have a problem. As long as you're under 1800 watts, it'll work just great. Again, 24 pounds, totally portable. Now inside the kit, you'll find three ways to charge it. There's an AC kit where you can charge it at home. The beautiful part about this, and I'll get into this in more detail in a minute, but EchoFlow is built in conditioning software on both the way you charge it and the way you charge things from it. And I'll get into that a little at the end, but essentially with an AC connection, you can fully charge this unit in less than 90 minutes. And that's a huge difference between this one and a lot of other portable power stations that could take hours to fully charge them. So I like the fact that I can plug this in in less than 90 minutes, because you never run it down to zero. So somewhere around 50%, it might take less than an hour. But anyway, I can charge it really quickly and get out the door and use it, which is really what I want to do. They also include two other cables that you can charge it with. There's one for your car. And again, depending on the discharge level when you start that charging cycle, that could take three or four hours from your car. And by the way, don't leave your car off when you're charging it because it's drawing a lot of current out of your car battery. And the worst thing that can happen is it's fully charged to come back and you can't start your car. So make sure you start your car a couple of times when you're charging it. And the third option, which is the one I like because it really makes it portable, is solar charging. Now, depending on the solar panels you're using, how much sunlight you've got, how well they're facing towards the sun, that might take six or seven hours. But if you're out camping, just set up a solar panel, connect it up to the Delta Mini, and drink that sunlight, and you'll get free charging basically from sunlight, which is a pretty cool thing. But the key difference here is that they include all these. Like a lot of other kits, maybe less money, but then you have to buy the cord for the car, you gotta buy one to connect to your solar panel. 
I love the fact that they give you everything you need to charge it on any of those three different options. They also include a 5521 to 5521 cable, and I'll talk about that in a little bit, but a 5521 connector, and there's two ports on this unit, is a pretty common connector that you can use to charge a lot of external devices. It's a 12 volt DC connector, and this will supply, there are two ports that will supply three amps to those 5521s. And a lot of people see those and think, well, what am I gonna ever use that for? Well, there's a lot of external cables you can get. Here's one example. 5521 on this end and a standard car charger in this end. You could plug two of these into the other side and charge two devices at the same time in addition to the carport that's on there. So the 5521 is really nice. All right, also you'll find a guide for connecting up a solar panel. They talk about specifications and the type of connectors you'll need. And you'll also find a full instruction manual that lists everything you need to know about this product, specifications, technology, how to charge it safely, how to store it safely, all the things you care about. And they also include, which I think is really brave, a uh, 12 month warranty, then you can actually send this in and warranty the unit. But on the back of this, they've got a happy and not happy card. <laughs> I think that's brave because a lot of times you'll buy a product and the company never wants to hear from you again. So if you have trouble, you've got to go on like this hunt to try and get in touch with the company and nobody wants to get back to you. EchoFlow will get back to you. They've got a card right here that lists contact information. So if you have questions or problems, call them up, send them an email, they'll get back to you really quickly. If you're not happy with it, they're brave enough to put information in here where you can complain, where you can actually say, hey, I don't like your unit, what are you doing here? So I think, again, from a company perspective, what that tells me is I've got a company that cares about me as a consumer and really wants to make things right. And if there's a problem, they want to fix it. They want everybody to be happy. So brave move on their part. I like that a lot. I also like the fact that they're giving you a printed manual. So many companies nowadays just put a little graphic in there where you scan it with your camera and you go to their website and then you can download a PDF and print it. I don't want to go through all that. I like the fact that I've got a manual here that I can look at. The print's really big so old guys like me can read it. It's wonderful. So thank you for that, EchoFlow. All right, so that's basically it. Now, let me talk a little bit about the power station because EchoFlow as a team, as an engineering team, is, and I use this word not that often, but I use it a lot when I talk about EchoFlow, their team is brilliant in the way they design products because what they did before they built their first portable power station was sit down and say, okay, we're going to dive into the portable power station market. Let's take a look at what the landscape looks like today with different products that are out there and how we can improve those products. Let me take a look at who's releasing different products with different specifications and see what we can do to actually improve that technology. And the first thing they did was realize this is a big battery. So the batteries that are inside of it are critical. Now, a lot of companies use what are called lipo cells, which are lithium polymer cells, and there's different grades of lithium polymer cells, and we can have a debate forever about which one is the best and whatever, but lithium polymer as a general technology is fairly finicky as far as temperature goes. So if they're based on just pure lipo cells, you might have an issue charging it when it's hot or charging it when it's cold. You won't get as many charge cycles out of it. It doesn't retain the charge as long. So if you charge it on a Saturday, you don't leave till a Wednesday, there may not be a full charge in it. What EchoFlow decided to do was use a newer version of lipo technology called lipo NCM, which is nickel manganese cobalt which is a wonderful technology that has better retention on the batteries. It'll hold the charge longer. It's also safer. It can tolerate higher temperatures, lower temperatures. So it's a much better technology. Now, if you look that up technology-wise, there are better batteries than that, but they're really expensive. And for a portable power station like this, if I can get a couple hundred charges, five, six, seven hundred charges out of it from dead to full, that's 10 years of my life. <laughs> I'll definitely replace it before I have to worry about the batteries going bad. So LiPo NCM is a wonderful technology for batteries. So they built a really good storage module inside the unit to hold the charge you put in it. Then there are two other considerations. How do you get the electrons into those batteries? In other words, how do you charge the unit? And second, how do you get the electrons out of the battery to charge the devices you've connect up to it? So let me talk about the input first. So from an input perspective, like I'd mentioned, you can charge it from an AC wall socket, you can charge it in your car, you can charge it off a solar panel. That's great. A lot of other companies out there may not give you all these options. It is wonderful that I've got an option to charge it in all three places. But the real big difference with this unit and some of the others on the market is if you look at most of the portable power stations out there, they'll charge off of a 12 to 36 volt DC current. And what they'll give you is a generic brick. It's this big charging brick, like you have with your laptop, where you'll plug one end into a wall outlet, the brick converts that AC to DC with the right voltage and current to charge that device, and the other end will have a barrel connector on it that you plug into the portable power station, and they work okay. The problem is they're wildly inefficient, so they take a long time to turn the AC to DC, and they don't do a good job of converting all of it, so they're not charging the portable power station at a healthy rate, and that's why it takes so long to charge it. So EchoFlow said, we're gonna build the charging circuit ourselves. We're 
we're going to build it internal to the unit. And it takes the responsibility of converting the AC to DC. But the really important thing is it's monitoring the batteries while it's charging them. So it's making tiny little adjustments as needed to flatter those batteries, to carefully charge them and quickly charge them. And that's the reason you can get out the door in less than 90 minutes with a full charge. Other portable power stations that use external bricks really don't have that level of control over the charging cycle because that brick basically converts 120 volts AC maybe to 12 to 36 volts DC, and you plug it into the portable power station, and there's really no control over how those batteries are being charged. With this one, EchoFlow is monitoring that charging cycle, which does a couple of things for you. Number one, it'll give you longer life out of the batteries because if you're monitoring them, giving them just the right amount of current, they're gonna be happy over a longer period of time, and you're not gonna stress those batteries by firing too much current at them. The second thing it does is eliminate the chances of that external power brick going bad. Now, over time, if you have this for four or five years, Maybe you've dropped that brick a few times. Maybe it's getting old and the cables are getting worn and it goes bad. Now you can't charge a portable power station with the other vendors. So you've got to go out there on a hunt to try to find some kind of external charger that has the right voltage, the right current, the right connector on it. You've got another expense. With EchoFlow, you basically just plug it into the wall and that extreme technology takes over, takes charge of charging those batteries for you and you're going to charge them safely. Another thing that's built into this unit is a concept called a battery management system. Now, all portable power stations have some type of battery management system, but the one in here is incredibly sophisticated because it's monitoring things like over voltage, over current, over temperature, under temperature, short circuit. So if anything strange happens during the charging cycle or while you're charging external devices, that battery management system jumps into action and will take charge and stop any kind of dangerous thing from happening. Other portable power stations in the market have battery management systems, but they're a lot more crude. They're a lot more simple and they don't handle it as well as this one does. And that's super important because that battery management system is responsible for deciding what current and voltage is being sent to your external devices. And if you think about that for a second, this unit compared to what the cost of all those things you're charging off it is small. So if you're plugging in a phone, a tablet, drone batteries, a controller, a TV, a bunch of other appliances, and something happens with the battery management system where it sends the wrong voltage and current to those appliances, you're gonna damage a lot of expensive equipment. So knowing you've got a smart battery management system that's monitoring all the external devices connected, as well as the inrush current for charging the unit is super important. Now, as I mentioned before, you have three options for charging. I would say about 90 minutes in the house. I've never had it take that long because I never run the thing down past 30 or 40%. You can charge it in your car at about four hours on average, and you can charge it from a solar panel outside, depending on how much sunlight and what kind of solar panel you've got. You can charge it pretty quickly there as well, but that's probably about six hours. I use it when I'm traveling, and it works pretty well out there in the outdoors. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the output. Now, the output is super important because, all right, we've got this big battery bank inside there. We figured out how to charge it. We've got this beautiful extreme technology. I'll charge it really quickly. But how do I get those electrons out of the battery to all the devices that I want to charge off of it? Now, there are two things to consider there. The type of connections that you can actually use. You want to have at least AC, DC, and USB. This has all three. And then what are those currents available on those three ports? That's super important. So with this unit, I'll start with the AC. Around back, you'll find that you have five full-sized AC outlets. And the other thing I didn't mention yet is that each of these circuits operate independently. So you'll turn the unit on, but then you have separate power buttons for the AC, the DC, and the USB. And again, that's important because a lot of the portable power stations in the market have one big power button. You hit it, the thing comes on. And if you're not using the AC circuit, the inverter that actually converts that DC to AC is running the whole time and it's drinking electrons from the battery and you're not using it. So with this one, you can turn on the AC when you want to turn it on. And again, there are five full-sized AC outlets right here. Four of them allow you to use a three-prong ground it, and one of them is a floating ground. So you can you know, plug a bunch of things in there and you're good to go. You'll also notice a DC port on the bottom. This is a standard DC port, and I'll show you this in a closer view in a second. But the DC port is just like the one in your car. Anything you plug in your car, you can plug in there. That'll provide 12 volts at 10 amps. So it's gonna give you a full 10 amps of charging current. And again, anything you're gonna charge in your car, you'll perfectly find a plug in there. These are the two 5521 ports I mentioned a minute ago. Now, if you have a device like a, a GPS product or a DVD player, a lot of things use a 5521 you can plug in here and plug directly into that device and again each of these will supply 12 volts at 3 amps my favorite thing to do though is to plug in something like this where i can plug it into one of the 5521s here and once i plug that in now i have another car outlet 
and you can plug two more of these in. Now these aren't 10 amps, they're only three amps, but I like that because a lot of the drone chargers I have are car chargers, so I can take those with me, plug them in here, and I'm ready to go. So that's your DC side of it. Now, where it gets really interesting for me is on the USB side, and I'll show you that next, because most of the things you're gonna wanna charge with this, whether it be your phone, your tablet, or your computer, are gonna charge through a standard USB. And what EchoFlow has done here is not only giving you both USB-A and USB-C, which are the two most common USB connections, but they've built in some really advanced technology because let's start with the USB-A. USB-A is available in two flavors. A standard USB-A cable would be five volts at a maximum of 2.4 amps. Now, if you've got a wall charger at home, it's probably gonna charge five volts at maybe an amp and a half, two amps, or two and a half amps if you're lucky, but two and a half amps is the largest you can actually charge from a standard five volt USB port. This is two of those available, and they're both 2.4 amps. So anything you're charging at home today with a standard USB-A cable, plug it right in there, charge to your heart's content. They've also built in a quick charge USB-A. Now, quick charge, is a technology that works on a lot of Android devices, and you'll know if your product is QC enabled because you read through the manual, it's either QC3, QC4, but Quick Charge is a technology that when you connect the device up to this unit, the Quick Charge technology will handshake with that device to determine exactly what kind of voltage and current it needs to charge it quickly and efficiently. So if you've got a device that handles QC charging, there's one USB-A QC port on there. The USB-C port on here is another thing to consider because most USB-C ports are PD, or power delivery, but there's a difference in the amount of current they can provide. So a lot of the portable power stations in the market that offer a USB-C port may only offer 40 watts or maybe 60 watts of charging. This one offers a full 100 watts over that USB-C. And the reason that's important is because a lot of the newer devices that you're using, the larger tablets or your, your laptops or some of the drone batteries require at least 65 watts this will provide 100 watts. Most of the laptops nowadays need 100 watts or close to 100 watts. So what that means is you can plug in two standard devices to the USB-A's, you can plug in a QC device to the extra USB-A, and you can plug anything with a 100 watt PD charging capability into the USB-C. So again, I keep saying it, you can charge 12 things at the same time off this unit. I can run a lamp, I can run a power saw, I can charge my portable devices. It's got every kind of connection you need, and it's giving you the maximum current provided for those particular ports based on the specification. So that's why I'm saying I get jazzed about a product like this because before I used to carry the River products, and they're great, and I love that River Mini, and I used to carry a lot of the Delta products, but they're big and they're heavy. This is like the perfect marriage of those two product lines. So if you stay tuned, I'll take a closer look at it next, and then I'll come back and point out some of the key things that this product provides that you may not find on other portable power stations. On the front of the product, you'll find the main power button. And to turn the unit on, you'll hold this button for a couple of seconds, you'll hear a beep, and the display will come on. Now, this display gives you a lot of really good information about the current state of the Delta Mini. Starting in the upper right-hand corner, it's labeled input watts, and that's showing you how much current is flowing into the product during a charging cycle. And that's really important to keep an eye on, because if you're charging this off of solar panels, that'll let you know how many watts are flowing in to charge the batteries from those solar panels, and you may need to reposition them to increase that number. Below that are output watts, and that's showing you how much current is flowing out of the unit to charge all of the devices you have connected to it. And that's important to keep an eye on because if you're approaching 1,000 or 1,200 watts, you may want to turn on the X-Boost technology. That actually allows you to get up to 1,800 watts in case you want to plug more devices in. In the center, you'll find the current charge level of the internal batteries. Now, right now I'm at 30% because I was using this this afternoon, and I like the fact that they give you a numerical representation as well as a digital representation. So right now it's at 30%, and I have three bars lit up. Those bars represent the current charge level. So if this was at 100%, all the bars would be lit up, and it'd say 100 in the middle. And I like that because I can look at it from across the room and tell pretty quickly roughly how much charge is left in the unit. This number on the left, it says hours, is an indication of how much energy is left in the batteries to continue to charge the things you have plugged into it. And that's a really important metric for me because when that gets down under 20 hours, I start thinking about all the things my kids have plugged into this and, and start unplugging their stuff and plugging into things I really care about. So that's a great indicator to let you know how much energy is left to continue to charge the things that are plugged in for that amount of time. Below that, you'll find an IoT reset button. This unit can connect to an external application on your phone, and you'll reset it here. So if you have trouble with that connection, you can hold that in for a couple of seconds. It'll reset the connection and allow you to reconnect. 
Below that are all of your USB connections. Now, I'll start on the right-hand side. You'll find three full-size USB-A ports. The one on the right is a quick charge port. It's a QC port, and that's special because when you're connecting up a QC device, this will look at that device, and it'll, it'll sort of check it and see what kind of current and voltage it needs to fast charge that device and safely charge that device, and it'll make adjustments based on whatever device you connect up. So if it's a tablet or a phone, it'll make adjustments that are different for both of those, and that's a standard QC connection. The two in the middle are full-sized USB-A ports. Both of these will deliver standard 5 volts at 2.4 amps, so it's a standard USB charge there, and you can use any USB cable you have on any of these ports. The one on the left is a USB-C port, but it's special because it's a PD or power delivery port, and it can deliver 100 watts of charging. So what that means is those larger thirsty devices you have, like a laptop or the big tablets or your drone batteries, you can plug it in here. A lot of other portable power stations may have a USB-C port, but it may only be 40 watts or 60 watts, knowing you have 100 watts right there means that this can charge pretty much anything you can connect over a USB-C. To turn this off, you'll tap that button again or hold it in, it'll actually turn off. On the rear of the unit, in the top, you'll find a little door you can open up, and that's where you plug in all of your charging cables. So this one's a full-sized AC port, and you can use the included cable and plug one end into any standard wall outlet, plug the other end in here, and you're good to go. You have a fast and slow custom charging here, so normally I leave that on slow or custom, and you can set that charging rate through the application. If you need to quickly charge this, just slide that button up. It'll fast charge the unit again safely. You'll find a circuit breaker over here as well. If you exceed the current this product can provide, it'll actually trip that mechanical breaker. If that happens, just give it a couple of minutes to cool down and reset it there by tapping the breaker. On the left-hand side, you'll find the DC input port, and that's used with both the solar panel cable and your car cable. So both of those have a connector that made up really well with that. Simply plug it in there, plug it into your car, or connect it to a solar panel, and you're all set to charge it. Below it are your five AC outlets. Again, you can supply 1,400 watts under normal conditions or up to 1,800 watts if you have the uh, X-Boost technology turned on. And you can actually turn on the AC portion by tapping that button right there. Four of these outlets allow you to connect up a grounded plug, and the fifth one is floating, so you can use those as needed. Below that is your DC output port. That's a standard 12 volts, 10 amps right here. It's a standard car port, like I would mentioned before. So anything you plug into your car, you can plug in here and you can charge it just fine. You'll also find two 5521 ports right here. Each of these supply 12 volts at 3 amps maximum, and you can use an external connection. As long as it's a 5521, you can connect it there. And again, you can turn on the DC portion by tapping that button. On the one side of the unit, you'll find vents in here that have fans behind them. Those will turn on if you're drawing an excessive amount of current to cool the electronics inside. They may also turn on when you're charging it, especially at the beginning of a charging cycle where there's a lot of current heading into the batteries. And that's really nice that they'll keep the electronics nice and cool. Same thing on the other side, you'll find more ventilation here with fans behind it. And again, those fans work in concert with the ones on the other side to pull air through the unit, and pull the hot air out of the unit. So it sort of manages the temperature inside the unit so the electronics are always operating at a very comfortable temperature. On the top of the unit, you'll find a nice flat surface in the middle, and that's great for setting down your phone or your tablet or your drone batteries while you're charging them. That keeps them up off the ground and out of the way. You'll also find two heavy-duty handles on either side that are really smooth, very easy to carry this thing out in the field. It's just a really easy unit to transport and bring along with you. On the bottom of the unit, you'll find two shock absorbers that are actually on the bottom and extend around the sides, and those are great for absorbing any little shock that may occur when you put it down on a surface. They'll sort of absorb that shock and not transfer it to the electronics inside. They also lift the unit off the ground just a little bit to provide additional ventilation underneath, and that's important for cooling. And the other thing is, I like that they're rubber, because when I set this down on a surface, they're going to protect the surface, and they're going to keep the Delta Mini right where I put it. It's not going to slide around as if it had a plastic bottom, so really nice addition there. I hope that closer look was helpful. Now here are a few really important things to keep in mind when you're comparing the Delta Mini product from EchoFlow with other portable power stations you may be considering. The first thing most people look for is the internal capacity of a portable power station, and that's a good place to start. But there are really two parts to that specification. This unit provides 882 watt hours of internal capacity, and that's a lot of power for a small unit like this. But the second part of that specification I think is even more important, and it's the amount of energy that the product can supply to externally connected devices. This product can provide 1400 watts of external power. 
Plus, it has the X-Boost technology built in that allows you to stretch that to 1800 watts. And that's really important because that delta between the 1400 and 1800, that surge current, really matters when you're running things like power saws and drills or blenders, anything with a motor in it that requires a lot more current when you first start it up and then trickles down to less current after that. With other portable power stations that don't have the ability to handle that kind of surge, you'll trip a breaker and the portable power station will shut down. So I like that a lot because it means I can use the Delta Mini with my power saw in the backyard and if I run into a hard part of a board and the current surges a little bit, it's not gonna shut down. The other thing you wanna consider is the weight of a unit. I can't get over the fact that they can pack 882 watt hours into a package this small that's 24 pounds. That means it's ultimately portable. Some of the other portable power stations in the market that have larger capacities or larger outputs are really big and clunky. And the last thing you wanna do is drag something out in the field that's really heavy and bring it home with 50% of the charge left in it. So for me, this one's right in that Goldilocks zone of having internal capacity that's great and portability, which I think is important. The next thing to consider is how you can charge the unit. Now, some of the portable power stations in the market, you can only charge them at home and you gotta charge them with an external brick. It's hard to charge them in your car. It's even harder to charge them from a solar panel. With the Delta Mini, you have three options. You can charge it at home, again, in less than 90 minutes. You can charge it in your car or you can charge it from a solar panel and they include all the cables you need. You're not out there fishing around trying to find the right cable to charge it in your car. Everything is in the box to start, so that's great. They've also built in the extreme charging technology, which I talked about before, which means they're gonna handle the current that's heading for those batteries. They're going to groom it, they're going to condition it, and make sure the batteries are charged safely and quickly, which is why you can get out the door in less than 90 minutes. With other portable power stations that use external bricks, you could be four or five hours charging those portable power stations. And the last thing I want to do is be waiting to get outside to have some fun because the portable power station isn't fully charged. So I love the fact that I can charge it quickly. And probably the most important metric of all when you're looking at a portable power station is, okay, I can charge it, it's fully charged, I'm heading out in the field, what can I charge from it? What kind of connections do I have? What kind of current can I draw? And that's where this product really shines because every possible connection you could need out in the field, you can use with this product. So if you wanna plug in AC units, you've got five, five outlets on the back, again, that you can draw up to 1800 watts out of, continuously out of the box. And four of those are grounded, one is a floating ground. So anything you wanna plug in AC wise, you can plug in there as long as it's below that 1800 watts. The DC side of it, I've got a DC, it's on the back. I've got a DC port just like in my car that'll supply 10 amps of current at 12 volts. That's a lot of current. So anything I plug in my car, I can plug into the unit. They also supply it with two 5521 connectors. And like I'd mentioned, I keep putting this down here, you can plug a lot of external cables into that to increase the number of things you can plug into a standard car outlet on the unit. So I love the fact that for DC, I've got a lot of connections as well. And then when you get to the USB connections, again, that's where this really shines because all these portable devices we're using nowadays require different currents, different voltage, different connectors, and a lot of the portable power stations in the market really limit that to maybe a couple of USB-A connections, maybe a USB-C, but a low current USB-C. This unit provides two full-sized USB-A ports that are fully charging at five volts, two and a half amps, or 2.4 amps, which is the maximum for the standard of USB-A. They also supply an additional USB-A connection that's QC enabled, it's quick charge capable, which means it can make adjustments for whatever you're connecting it up to charge it quickly and fast, just like it does at your home, and safely charge that unit as well. They also include a USB-C port that's PD, power delivery capable, at 100 watts, which means large things like tablets and you know portable uh, battery banks and maybe you're charging your laptop, all those things, plug them in there, it's just gonna charge it plenty, plenty fine for you. So I love the fact that anything I need to charge over USB, I can plug into the front of the unit. And the best part is, I can charge them all at the same time. I can plug a bunch of stuff into the bag, plug something into the DC ports. I can plug something on the 5521s and all of it will charge at the same time as long as I stay under 1400 watts. And the display in the front is another big benefit that you don't normally find in other portable power stations. Sometimes it's got a little digital display and it's hard to read it. With this one, I have a beautiful display that comes on. It shows me what the inrush current is when I'm charging it. It shows me what capacity I'm using out of it. It gives me a timer to let me know that if I have things connected to it, how much longer can I use it before the battery goes dead? That's great as a dad because when I'm out with the kids, I'm starting to get low. I'm unplugging their stuff and I'm plugging my stuff in. So everything you need to do with this unit, you can, you can see up front exactly how it's going. And the last thing I'll mention is EchoFlow is one of the first companies that actually provide an external application you can use with the product. 
you'll connect to the unit over your phone. There's an application that controls everything that's going on with the unit. You can turn X boost on, turn X boost off. You can see the current that's being drawn. You can plug it into the basement, go upstairs, have some breakfast. You can check your phone, see how close it is to being fully charged. So that, that application is wonderful. It also allows you to update the firmware. So if EchoFlow introduces new features down the road or they decide to change certain features, it'll upgrade the firmware and it'll just make it a newer unit. So it's sort of an evergreen product in that respect. And that's pretty much all I had for today. Now, I've got links below if you want to check this out. I've got a link to Amazon. And what's interesting about this is we've been thinking about selling EchoFlow products on the Drone Valley website for a while. I've been working with the company for quite a while. And I'm telling you, I've reviewed a ton of different portable battery uh, stations out there. There's not a lot of great ones. There's a lot that are good. There's some that are not that great. But Echo Flow, in my opinion, hands down, one of the best ones you can buy today. Matter of fact, I like it so much that we're actually selling the Echo Flow products. We're now an authorized retailer for Echo Flow. And I'll tell you what made the difference for me was this unit, the Delta Mini. When I saw this, tested this, I'm like, you know what? They're way ahead of the curve. And this is a company I want to work with. So I've got a link below for the Drone Valley site as well. Now you might be thinking, why would I buy it from Amazon versus Drone Valley? Well, we're a technology company. We're local. So if you have problems with it, you call me. I answer the questions. I can fix things for you. Plus, we're building a bonus end. So if you buy it from Drone Valley for a limited time, you're going to get a charging kit, which has a really nice Drone Valley pouch and a bunch of other cables and connectors and doodads you're going to need to use this thing in addition to all the cables you're bringing along with you. So check that out on the website if you're curious about it. And again, I love reviewing technology like this. And when I find a company like EchoFlow that builds products like this that are well ahead of the competition, I just get super excited talking about them. And I use this pretty much every time I leave the house. So wonderful product. And I hope you found this video helpful. So thanks again for watching and until next time <laughs> stay nerdy mm -hmm.